Welcome to my unboxing and first look of the Droid DNA from HTC. This is called, in other regions, the Butterfly J, but there are a couple of changes that have been made, most notably the removal of the microSD expansion slot. So this is something that has caused a little bit of ire, but if you're like me and you've never actually gone over the 16 gigs of space on your iPhone, then it's probably less of an issue for you. So, for starters, we are going to go ahead and open the box because that's apparently what we do on this channel. Now you'll notice we've got our dual cam set up, but we've made some improvements, so we're hoping that you guys will appreciate them. Number one is there's no audio clicking. That is something that we did figure out a way to resolve. Number two is we've got the colors matching better on the cameras. And number three is you shouldn't see any weird motion blur as I'm opening up the box here. The box is extremely tight. So uh, you can tell this is a fresh, non-deflowered phone that has never been used before in a way that would be undesirable to the uh, upcoming owner of it. So here we go. Just pull a little tab open here. The phone comes out. The first thing you'll notice about the Droid DNA is it's absolutely huge. The second thing you might notice, if you did any reading about it whatsoever, is that the screen is actually not 720p like most phones these days. Yes, it is a 1080p screen that is actually in an area that is smaller than a Galaxy Note 2. So that's the one that I have here for comparison. That means you have a massive 440 pixels per inch of pixel density, which actually just, well, demolishes pretty much everything else. For comparison, an iPhone 5 is 326 pixels per inch. So let's go ahead and open up some more stuff here. There's a Verizon start here. There's a SIM tray removal tool, handy dandy. I'm not really much of a phone guy, but I'd imagine you need that if you're going to change your SIM card, which has something to do with connecting to the interwebs or something like that. Start here guide. Aha! Spanish. Because this is not a Canadian phone. Global support information and calling card. Consumer info. Holy crap. What, what in that? Look at this. It's like, the end, it's like a clown car of stuff. So there's a SIM card that presumably would be included if you were an actual Verizon customer, which I'm not. And finally, a couple of HTC stickers. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Like the packaging. Very plain, black, which of course makes it easy for us to show you all the black products against the black packaging on the black table. It includes a charging cable. So there's your mini, or rather micro USB charging cable. Okay. Also includes a wall wart, and that is pretty much it. Once we power up the phone, Obviously, the first thing you're going to notice about it is that 1080 screen. Another thing you might notice is that HTC has altered the UI, the stock UI for Android, a little bit. So they're calling it their Sense 4 Plus UI. Some people are familiar with this, some people aren't. I am not, so I don't really have any comments on it right now. In terms of the overall layout of the phone, on the top you've got, actually, look at that. Everything's labeled on this handy dandy little thing that I pulled off without actually looking at it more than once. So this is a power and lock key on the top. You've also got your headphone jack here. That's how you get access to the SIM tray. On this side, you've got volume up and volume down, as well as a gorgeous looking red accented speaker grill. So this is actually, look at that, that's a metal button. Feels very nice. On the bottom, you find a USB, ah, there we go, USB charging port. And that is pretty much it. So there's not much in terms of buttons. On the other side, you find another red accented speaker grill. On the back, you find the camera. So the rear camera is 8 megapixel. The front camera is 2.1 megapixel. The rear camera will take 1080p video, and the front camera will take 720p video. There's an included LED flash. Uh, one other thing that you guys might care about about this particular phone is that it actually has two indicator lights on it. So there's one on the front of the phone as well as one on the back. So that just means that if, oh, I thought we were getting some choppy frame right there, but we're not. So that just means that no matter how you put the phone down on your nightstand, if you have a missed notification or whatever else, then you're going to be able to check it out and make sure that you don't, well, not be able to check it out. So other things that are included. Oh, right. Actually, I should talk about this. So HTC has acquired the rights for the whole Beats audio thing. So that's no longer going to be um, that's no longer going to be available on sort of such a weird variety of products. HTC owns that. So this phone, as well as the Windows Phone 8X, which we'll be checking out soon, actually have Beats Audio. So what does that mean? 
Beats Audio inherently doesn't necessarily mean anything because Dr. Dre does not actually use Beats by Dre headphones when he's recording in the studio. I hope you guys know this. I really hope you know this. But what it does mean in the case of this particular phone, the Droid DNA, is that it does have a headphone app built into it. So if nothing else, if you are using headphones or earbuds that are higher impedance than normal, you're going to actually be able to drive those at a reasonable volume compared to phones that do not have a headphone app built in. So hopefully, once I've had a chance to actually try it out a little bit, I'll be able to say a bit more about that. Looking closer at the screen again, I just want to take a moment to talk about the difference between Super LCD 3 and AMO LED, such as what's used on popular phones like, say for example, that one that everyone buys, the Galaxy S3 from Samsung. So AMO LED has the advantage of giving you deeper blacks because you can actually turn the pixels off. They can stop emitting light. However, the disadvantage is sometimes text can be not quite as sharp and not quite as crisp because it doesn't use dedicated subpixels. So it's a, just a slightly different display technology. I also suspect that the availability of screens that are capable of running at a 440 pixels per inch density and at 1080p resolution for AMO LED would be less and that that would also be a significant expense to add to the overall phone because at the end of the day you can produce as exciting a piece of technology as you want but if absolutely no one or their dog or their dog's fetchy toy or whoever else if no one can afford it then it's kind of a, a non-starter a non as far as that's concerned so other cool features it's got wireless charging which I personally think is freaking awesome because the first thing I would have complained about on a phone like this is the fact that it has micro USB like all other Android phones seem to have and I hate micro USB it just breaks all the time it does support 4G LTE but not for me see there's that 4G LTE logo on the back um, not supported here in Canada with this particular phone I think I'd have to get a different version um, oh yeah, right, so the hardware that's running on this guy, S4 Pro. The S4 Pro pr uh, platform, so that's a Crate S4 Pro, is actually the most powerful mobile capable platform. So normally, you would actually see one of the lower end chipsets in a phone because of power draw concerns, but they've gone with not only the S4 Pro, but also the fastest Adreno 320 GPU to pair with it, Partly, I think, because, A, it's a multimedia-style device. It's a larger phone, so if you look at it in my hands, you're going to notice that it's actually probably a little bit too big for me. I can only reach about here to here, but this phone's going to be used by my wife anyway. And then the other thing is because of the 1080p resolution, you're going to need a powerful GPU just to draw basic things like Android animated effects and have them not lag out at all. So it's running Jelly Bean, which means that you do have the Project Butter experience with everything being smoother but without a decent GPU even that could potentially be compromised so let's go ahead and just kind of check out I don't know if I ever showed you guys the back in detail so it's just uh, got a matte soft touch finish on it looks great feels really good uh, what else am I missing here Ah yes, back here 2.0 aperture lens so that just basically means it lets in more light a lower aperture is better. It means less light is lost through the lens, which means that in, regardless of, because you can only put so big of a sensor inside a device like this. You can only put in so much processing power before it just doesn't start to make a difference at all. So you have to have excellent clarity to the optics in order to deliver as much light as possible through the lens and onto the sensor itself. So that's actually part of HTC's entire platform on this guy that is called ImageSense. So that is quick image readiness, so they're claiming 0.7 seconds from nothing to being ready to take a photo. They're also, they've also added things like burst shot, subject tracking. Uh, you can record a video and then you can actually record still images while you're recording a video and have them saved separately, which I also think is kind of cool. And they're basically just saying it's kind of one of those Beats by Audio, Beats by Dre Audio, Beats branding things where they're going, okay, we, don't, we, we can't just list all of these features on the phone, so we're going to call it Image Sense, and it's going to include the 2.0 aperture lens as well as all that extra functionality in the photo taking software itself. I don't think we've actually missed anything. This particular phone has 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of storage space. Unfortunately, like I said before, it is not upgradable with microSD. It does support NFC, which is great as more devices support NFC. You might be able to do things like whip your phone out and unlock your door. Or, I mean, if you're like me and you're lazy, you could just have the phone in your pocket and just be like, ugh, ugh just kind of jump up to the door like that and try and unlock it that way.
Again, I can't emphasize enough how gorgeous the screen is. The, uh, the text that's overlaid right now, that's showing sort of pull down to see notifications, press and hold an empty space to add widgets and shortcuts, drag an app over another to create a folder, and drag your favorite apps to the launch bar to customize it. It almost looks like, uh, like e-ink over top of continue to show quick tips. Sure, why not continue to show quick tips. So let's go ahead and see if we can, uh, see if we can get the brightness turned up a little bit here. Beats Audio is not available on the phone speaker. Oh, OK, well, that's interesting. Makes sense, I suppose. Brightness, there we go. Nope, no automatic brightness. I want to crank it. Aha! There we are. So it probably doesn't help that it's kind of a dark background there, but you can see it's extremely bright. We're going to go ahead and have you look at it from the side. So the colors do not change at all from the side. And in terms of just sort of whipping around inside the UI here, it's extremely snappy, I guess, if we wanted to zoom or do whatever else. Okay. So there's Google, ringtone. Oh, OK. I bumped the ringtone. There we go. So we want to sort of zoom around. Maybe let's go to, I don't know, ncix.com. And it would help a lot if I hit the X correctly. Never liked the Android, the stock Android keyboard as much as I like the iOS keyboard. But since there's lots of options that you can change it to, then it should be fine. So absolutely gorgeous. Quick scrolling. There we go. I think that pretty much concludes our unboxing of the Droid DNA from HTC. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.